Okay. Uh, part of one's development of, of the, the, the growing uh, and learning and understanding these complex networks that do take place in the golf swing. Uh, this next stage of understanding uh, the TED sections I think will be extremely beneficial for you to know how the golf swing is broken down to various sections. So you have a better feel of, of uh, what I've been trying to do with the MORAD information to eliminate the waste of the golf swing and increase the productivity. I believe MORAD has been quite successful in that and I feel quite uh, beneficial to be the to have been the guinea pig of learning this information. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's discuss the 10 sections. First, the first of the 10 sections is the address position. Basically, at the address position, section number one, you again, now here you are, we just discussed motor set. You, you must have it incorporated within your understanding of your comprehensive framework of understanding how these things work. Motor set, now set up the 10th section. When you set up a uh, address, position number one, you're aware of, of again, where is your left foot alignment? Is it 45 degrees, is it 20 degrees, or is it right angles? You'll know that if it's 45 degrees, what kind of ball flight you're going to have and what are the restrictions you're going to have on your joints, hip girdle, shoulders, etc., etc. Position number two is flight, how the ball will go off in a, more of a lower trajectory. Uh, what I like to play with is put, put my... Six five four three two one three wood and a driver. Uh, you put it at right angles again. You know what kind of effect it has on hip girdle, slide, rota shoulder rotation, hand plane location, its trajectory, everything. Uh, so once you set up an address, you've got to determine again whatever your intention is of what kind of ball flight you want, what not only the flight of the ball but the trajectory and path in which it's going to fly from from the from the address an impact all the way to the end result where the green is located or the fairway. So, again, address position, you're aware of where your left foot is fixated. Um, you're aware of your axis tilt, uh, its relationships. You're aware of the radius locks. We'll discuss this lastly. You're aware of the left foot alignment. Now you're aware of the rotation going up from section one to section number four at the top coming all the way down to section 7, all the way up to section 9, and 10. You're aware of the rotation now. You're also aware now at the address position um, uh, that you don't want to have a release on the downswing. The triple force will release the club forward. You don't want to consciously try to throw it or fling it or push it or pull it forward. Just let the triple force do that for you. It'll throw it in a more consistent orbit and a more consistent alignment uh, from stages six down to seven up to stage eight. Again, motor set tells us that at the address position you've got to be aware of Newton's centrifugal force, how you can deliver the club down here at stage number six where your hands are just above your kneecap. You don't want to be coming down to stage number six way up here where the club shaft is so parallel because the centrifugal force will throw it from right here outward. Okay, we don't want to do that. So you have to know what stage centrifugal force is going to take over, and then the question is the amount of centrifugal force. And that's going to be determined of how much rotation you have in the downswing opposed to how much slide you have in the downswing. You don't want to have that much of a centrifugal force throwout action when you are dealing with your wedge, wedges moving on a very upright plane. That's why you want your left foot rotated inward that you can rotate down, the hip girdles will slide, slide to come under the ball this way. Okay, so these things are being, all must be coded in your circuits to understand what you're going to do at the address position okay, before that club even starts to go up and climb. So section one is the address. Uh, I have a, a forearm here, so therefore I'm going to have my left foot in about a 20 degrees alignment opened upward. Uh, my weight is going to be distributed a little bit towards the left side in between my center of gravity here and my left foot right in the middle of that position. Um, another point I forgot to mention was that the right foot must always be webbed out 4 to 5 degrees. You have your left foot hitting this forearm for me is rotated 20 degrees. The right foot is always braced 
four or five degrees open so that the, it will help you to brace the right foot. If the right foot is turned inward, it's very easy for the right hip bone to slide. And too many complexities take place when that happens. Okay, so if we go back to the dress position, you want your weight uh, slightly centered to the left of your center of gravity. Okay, if I'm going to hit this golf ball, I'm going to have the weight not in the center here, but slightly a little bit more to the left here.